Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining, uh, tuning in today and participating in our next stop on the Ohio Innovation Tour. Uh, this is presented in partnership with the Ohio Innovation Exchange, which you're going to hear about more in just a second. But my name is Chris Berry. I'm the president and CEO of Ohio X. We're a statewide technology and innovation organization working with our partner and member companies and orgs to build Ohio's tech hub. And so this conversation and the topics we'll be discussing today um, are among the most exciting in the state and certainly, certainly putting Ohio on the map. Uh, and so throughout our conversation today, uh, you're going to hear from a range of folks uh, talking about this partnership that our state now has with Intel um, and what's happening, especially in the southwestern Ohio region. So we're going to hear some from folks from the University of Cincinnati, uh, Jobs Ohio on this, um, and of course from Intel themselves. Uh, it's an exciting time, of course, for tech in Ohio. Just last night, uh, the president and his State of the Union mentioned what's happening with uh, Intel and in Central Ohio. And so uh, there's so much going on, so much excitement, and uh, we are excited to dig into it today. So for today's conversation, um, again, welcome and introductions from me. Then we're going to turn it over to Jeff from the Ohio Innovation Exchange. He's going to share a little bit about their platform, give you a demo so you can get a behind the scenes peek at to what exactly it is and how you can leverage it for your business or for your research. Uh, then we'll hear from the team at Intel, uh, some of the, wor the work that they are doing for research and education and their plans as this continues to get built out. Uh, then we'll hear from the University of Cincinnati and the Cincinnati Digital Futures Research Team as well. Uh, and then we'll, as we start to wrap up, hear about what's happening with the Cincinnati Innovation District and Jobs Ohio. As we're in this conversation today, uh, we want to encourage you, and we'll be dropping a lot of this in the chat function, uh, a few links, ohioinnovationexchange.org. Uh, you're going to see exactly what that is in just a moment, uh, and we very much uh, recommend you checking it out bookmarking it. Uh, also in the chat feature, and I'll do this in just a second when I turn it over to Jeff, but if you want to share your name, your organization, and your city in the chat, uh, if you want to, you can drop your LinkedIn, and we know people always love connecting with other folks uh, on here, whether they're speakers or attendees. Um, as I mentioned in that chat function, uh, put your questions, comments as you're listening, in addition to introducing yourself if you'd like. Uh, and then you can also mention things, you know, what would you like to see as we're having this discussion? What other questions or comments arise that we could perhaps build around for future conversations just like this. Uh, and then of course, after today's event, uh, be sure to follow uh, the Ohio Innovation Exchange on LinkedIn and on Twitter, visit their website, uh, and you can of course do so for Ohio X as well. And so I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm gonna to welcome to the stage, uh, Jeff from the Ohio Innovation Exchange. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for the partnership with you and your entire team to helping spread the message of all the great work happening across the state with higher education and in industry. Um, and we'd love to hear a little bit about your platform and your portal of uh, the Ohio Innovation Exchange. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Chris, and thanks everyone for being here today. I was just going to remind you, if you want, you can go ahead and hit record. Um, I don't know if we've done that yet. <laughs> it's recording, Jeff. Oh, okay, good. We're good to go. Okay, well, welcome everyone, and thanks again. Um, so my name is Jeff Agnoli. I work at Ohio State University. I'm a, a member of the corporate partnerships team, um, but, but my full-time role is really to support and um, basically evangelist or engagement specialist for the Ohio Innovation Exchange. Um, this is a statewide multi-institution platform designed to help us um, facilitate the discovery and connections between faculty and industry. Our primary focus is not necessarily faculty to faculty from institution, but really about pushing the resources, the talents, the expertise that the state has to offer um, to other companies that might want to engage in industry partnerships, not just in Ohio, in the region, but across the globe. Um, I'm going to give you a quick demo so you know what's in the tool and you know how to access it. Um, as Chris said, we invite you to bookmark it. It's simply ohioinnovationexchange.org. Um, a couple things right off the bat on the homepage. We do have a contact us form. So if you are prefer to connect with us through a uh, industry liaison, you can fill this out and someone from one of the universities will get back to you um, in a heartbeat. If you're just generally asking questions, you can just fill out the form and send it in. Um, we also have a link at the footer of the page where you can access all the different uh, email addresses. It, it is works just like any other Google search engine where you can enter in keywords. You can also search by um, name if you know of a particular faculty member. I'm not going to demo all that today. Rather, what I'm going to do is jump right into our professor who's here today, Rashmi Shah, who's uh, speaking in a little bit. 
Um, this is a typical profile and what it looks like. Um, our faculty profiles are auto-generated, we, meaning we're using data mining techniques to kind of grab their publications and activities. On the left-hand side is an email to contact her directly. Don't do that, she's probably very busy. Um, and then we also have her collaboration network, which pops up and shows who she particularly is uh, partnering with in her research activities. This is based on publications. If you come over here to the right, you can hit extend it, and the visualization shows not just who she works with in Cincinnati, all the blue dots. As you hover on them, you'll see the names, but other institutions as well and colleagues there um, that are part of the network. Each of these links will take you to those profiles, so it's a really handy way to kind of build out um, somebody's sort of research infrastructure. Um, the search engine grabs data from the bio section, as well as all her publication titles. Um, academic positions are listed here, degrees, um, and then keywords or tags or other ways to search. And I'll show you in a minute how you can use these to kind of navigate to find other colleagues or other people working in that space. On the scholarly works, um, just like Google Scholars, you're getting detailed publications. Um, in this case, uh, the system will provide DOIs to directly link you to that publication, or if it's public access, you can get the PDF and read the article. Um, these are auto-generated. Like I said, they're just uh, the system is monitoring her publications based on her research identifiers, which there are several of those, and the system simply grabs those and pulls them in. Grants data is coming from over 600 different sponsors across the globe, um, and as those uh, funding announcements are made and grants are awarded, they're added to her profile again automatically. You can link directly to the sponsor's website. Um, and view the abstract to see what the detail is about that. So it's all public access. Um, moving on to the next uh, bucket of data is equipment. Um, and equipment's probably not the best word for what we describe as equipment data. Um, but just to demo it, on the left-hand side, you can see how you can filter equipment, shared resources, centers, institutes, um, research software databases. As universities send us those records, we load them in the system. And then they're made available for searching either by institution um, or by uh, type of equipment. I'm going to for I'm going to showcase a particular record here at Cincinnati, their biomedical data informatics um, uh, center, basically. And what you're seeing is a, a brief description, a link to their website to learn more, uh, contact person where it's located, and then the system. A new feature that we're beginning to experiment with is we can now link to associated profiles. So if a faculty member is part of a center or institute, we can quickly include that profile on the record for the equipment. So sometimes when you're partnering with universities, it might be an institute or center that gets you in the door, but you're still interested in connecting with a particular faculty member, and that's an easy way to do that. Um, the last bucket of data is patents. Another part of innovation, obviously, in this ecosystem are all the patents that are being generated by the incredible researchers and scholars across the state of Ohio. Um, on the left hand side, you can see that you can filter by a variety of um, techniques. I've already limited this to the University of Cincinnati, where they are the lead um, assignee for a set of patents. And what you get is an ongoing list. We are pulling data directly from the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So there's over um, almost 3,000 patents that are coming in. On the left hand side, you can further um, limit it by fields of research. I always like to show this browse button because if you're looking for patents, it might be more helpful, depending on how you approach this, by looking in particular academic disciplines and subdisciplines that are associated. So here, for example, is information and computing science um, and the different areas that are represented. So that, in a nutshell, is how the platform works. We invite you to play with it, try it out. It's a great way to kind of identify potential partnerships that might exist that you might want to explore, and then reach back to the university um, for that last mile where we help you connect to individuals, centers, institutes, academic leadership, and the like. So with that, let me turn it back over to Chris. Is that okay? Or should I hand it off to Intel? No, that's great, Jeff. Thank okay. you so much. And uh, thank you to everyone also in the chat for introducing yourself, dropping where you're at in the state, and uh, please continue to do so, and also any questions or comments. And so we'll, we'll keep the uh, virtual written conversation there. Um, but do want to welcome to the uh, virtual stage now the Intel team. Uh, and Mindy, I'll turn it over to you to hear about some of your semiconductor award program for research, uh, plans for the future, and some of the latest updates, which again is a very timely 
uh, piece for us to be digging into with the president's shout out of Ohio and last night's State of the Union. Okay, thank you. Let me share for you. How's that? Great, we can see it. Okay, great. Uh, so I'd like to, uh, I'm here representing Intel obviously today. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to, let's see, start off. Let's see, trying to get it to, there we go. Uh, I'd like to start off by introducing myself. My name is Mindy Murdoch and um, I work in our Intel's corporate university and research office um, within our Intel labs group. I've been at Intel for many, many years and seen lots of different things um, uh, happening with technology throughout the years. So um, I'm a plethora of information for that. Um, right now I'm working on, um, I'm one of the program directors working on our semiconductor educational research program with Ohio. So my partner crime, she's on the phone here, is Somya Venkataramani. I hope I said that right, Somya. And uh, Somya is um, one of the leads here as, we, um, as we're working with our Ohio SERP uh, program. A little bit about um, what we're doing in Ohio, just to give everybody, just to go back a little bit. Intel did announce the investment of two new fabs in Ohio. That's a $20 billion investment. Um, this will be in the New Albany area, and it's just a huge site. It's uh, over a thousand acres there. And again, this will be um, one of the leading edge semiconductor sites in the United States. Um, in the United States right now, we have Intel has fabs in Arizona, Oregon, and uh, New Mexico um, right now. So this will be our fourth uh, uh, manufacturing site in the US. Um, this site is also going to be, it's so huge, it's going to be able to grow up to eight fabs. Um, and it's also one of the biggest investments in the state's history in Ohio, so that's really exciting. And the really great news is it's going to br bring over 3,000 Intel jobs uh, to Ohio. And when I say Intel jobs, um, we also have to think about the jobs that are supporting Intel. So all the suppliers that are coming in, all the construction workers, those are jobs just on top of these 3,000 jobs. So it's a really exciting um, exciting time for, for Ohio, I think, and Intel. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the investments that Intel is putting in um, to our semiconductor education and research. Um, the first is obviously Ohio. Um, for education and research alone, Intel is investing 50 million into Ohio. So that'll be a direct uh, fund. Um, we're also investing in the rest of the United States through our NSF, through the National Science Foundation. We're doing a dollar for dollar match there. And we're also um, uh, investing 50 million there. So overall, Intel is investing over 100 million um, into uh, semiconductor education and research in the next uh, 10 years. So next, um, we're gonna talk about Ohio a little bit and what we're doing there. So let me go there. Um, for Ohio, we've actually, um, we've come up with uh, our first request for proposal, which was sent out last year. Um, we have five areas or key topics that we have for the proposals, uh, curriculum development, faculty training, any laboratory equipment upgrades that may be needed, um, also in research. And the last one was student experiential opportunities, making sure that those students had a hands-on experience. So the, the plan was to, uh, we sent out the request for proposals last year. We were going to uh, invest 15 million uh, through a three-year program of 5 million each uh, year. So we've done that. Uh, we all of the we've approved all the uh, projects. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and uh, where was I going to go with that? Yeah, we've but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the second and third rounds of the RFPs because we're going to have two more rounds of them. We're planning to do that in 2024, 2025 for the first one or for the second one. And then the later one will be around 2026, 2027. 
Um, and again, all of these RFPs, they're open to all higher education institutes in the state of Ohio. So that includes community colleges, four-year colleges, advanced degrees, and also tech centers. So any type of uh, educational uh, institute in Ohio. So now I'm gonna show you a nice video. Hopefully you guys can hear it that shows um, where, who, which institutes are the lead institutes for these proposals that we've chosen and also um, the extent of where we're going to be in Ohio. So I love that it paints the picture, literally it paints the picture of the of where the uh, the extent of the reach is in Ohio. I'm really excited about that. A um, couple of the highlights about this funding that we're doing, and I mentioned before that the goal was to do 15 million in three years. Well, we when we got the proposals in, there were so many good proposals that we decided to go over and beyond. And we are, do, we are actually investing over 15 million. We're investing 17.7 .7 million um, in the first three years. Uh, you saw the eight uh, projects uh, by the leading uh, institutions that we have. Um, with those eight projects, we're touching uh, over 80 other institutions in the state of Ohio, which is amazing. Um, the community college network is just amazing how it works there. Um, we're also, uh, the proposals also will be providing scholarships for over 2,300 students, which is phenomenal. And with this, uh, we're estimating over 9,000 students to be educated in the next three years. So very exciting stuff um, for uh, Ohio and the investment there in Intel. Um, a little bit more. So, um, Along with the 50 million that we're investing, we're also investing in the uh, within NSF, so the National Science Foundation, with that one-to-one -one match. So hopefully our dollars will scale. So we'll have 100 million uh, for the whole United States in the next 10 years. And I wanted to talk to you about a couple of the short-term um, opportunities. So you may have gotten, you may have seen the Dear Colleague letter for um, two programs. The first one that was kicked off was really for those, uh, for workforce development around those skilled technical workforce. So technicians, so this could really go to two year or four year universities. Um, that deadline is over, but we're, they're probably going to open that up again uh, for this year. Um, the other opportunity is for that supports institutes that are giving out scholarships. So this is the STEM. So again, this uh, deadline will be coming up uh, February 20th and it's um, scholarships for institutions to support students in the areas of STEM. And again, this is part of the 10 year collaboration between NSF and Intel and it's the uh, 100 million. Um, but we're not stopping there. So last week it was announced that uh, NSF, the National Science Foundation, is um, um, starting a new initiative, which is called FUSE, or the Future of Semiconductors. And it is partnering with not only Intel, but other companies um, to support the future of semiconductor design and manufacturing. Um, so this is going to be almost 50 million. So again, Intel is investing um, even more um, into the future of the semiconductor research um, in the country and manufacturing. 
Um, there's information about the solicitation here where you can go and uh, find out more information and how to um, uh, request uh, funding from this uh, FUSE initiative. And I think that's all we have today. Um, be on the lookout for other types of, of uh, Intel investments in the future uh, for semiconductor education across the country. Um, and uh, thank you for having me here today. And I can answer any questions if you Great. have any. Well, thank you, Mindy. And we're gonna save questions uh, for the end with, with the group and collectively, but uh, if people okay. do have questions, you're welcome to save it for them or put in the chat so we can save it um, as we're continuing on. And so again, thanks to everyone for uh, putting questions, comments, uh, introductions into that chat. Um, but now we're gonna welcome the University of Cincinnati to the stage. Uh, and hear a bit more about some of this work that's, as you just heard, is happening uh, across Ohio, across the United States, uh, but specifically in southwestern Ohio. And so uh, we're going to hear from a grant recipient from the University of Cincinnati and welcome Dr. Rashmi Jha to the stage uh, to hear a little bit about the work happening on the campus of UC. So welcome. Can you see my screen? We can, and we can hear you too. Great. So thank you so much. I'm very thankful to um, Ohio Innovation Exchange for giving me this opportunity to speak uh, in this platform. And uh, we are very thankful uh, to Intel, uh, especially to Samia and Mindy for providing us mentoring uh, to make this whole effort uh, a success in Ohio. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Rashmi Jha. I'm a professor in uh, electrical and computer engineering department at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about semiconductor research, education and workforce development efforts in Southwest Ohio. Now I'm just one of the professors uh, in our university. We have a lot of professors and particularly in Southwest Ohio, um, uh, we have a lot of professors who do research in this uh, area. I'm just one of the representatives uh, who's just getting a chance to present my work. So, um, you know, uh, the basis of all these microelectronic innovation has been this field effect, uh, complementary metal oxide field effect um, transistor, which serves as a logic switch that can do all types of computing. And uh, going down the line, uh, the future of these type of switches that, you know, uh, Intel has pioneered uh, a lot of these innovations in this area. Uh, including the co-founder of Intel. We all know Moose Law um, uh, in this area is very famous. So um, the future is pretty bright. There are a lot of applications where these uh, type of transistors are needed. Uh, first of all, it is internet of things and edge computing, uh, a lot of opportunities there. And uh, all of us know about uh, AI and machine learning, a lot of opportunities for very um, scaled type of transistors and uh, integrated with memory in there. Uh, data centers, they, we need high performance computers. Uh, there we need a lot of processing power and high speed internets and whatnot. So um, there is a lot of demand and going forward in future, there will be more demands for these type of uh, field effect transistors that uh, you know Intel is planning to make in Ohio. So how have we done? Uh, so you can see that this is a chart, which is pretty famous chart. You can see on Y axis, we have just the numbers on X axis, we have years. Over the years, how the number of transistors uh, and per unit area of the chip or in microprocessors have increased. And we already have microprocessors with more than uh, 1 billion transistors. And how did we achieve that? So we all know that um, Moore's law of scaling, where you um, uh, scale down the size of the transistor, and it helps in um, um, you know getting us better performance, as well as you can um, pack up more number of transistors per unit area of the chip. But then at some point, physics kicks in. And when physics kicks in, then um, we all have to address the physics to continue scaling. Uh, for these devices, as we all know, the state of the art in manufacturing is about um, 14 nanometer uh, or even smaller. Uh, and when you make these transistors very small, then source and drain of these transistors come very close. And then, you know, it's very difficult to turn off these transistors. And because of the, uh, that, the uh, uh, leakage current increases and stuff like that. So if we want to continue scaling, we have to address this physics. And that is where other companies, IBM and several other companies um, have been um, uh, pioneering this 
um, um, this whole area where they have been continuing to scale down. And uh, the way I have heard at Ohio plant, Intel is going to make more advanced transistor technology and things like that. So we need to train students in these areas where you know they are able to understand what the demands are, um, uh, uh, as well as how they can be more creative and innovative in this whole, whole area. And then uh, there are more um, um, areas where, well, if we hit the bottleneck with the, just scaling the transistors, then uh, we are not short of ideas. There is a lot of innovation going on in packaging and heterogeneous integration, where you can put sensors, RF devices, memory technology, everything close to the logic. And apparently it can enable a lot of other uh, great uh, uh, areas. So getting back to me, I have worked uh, at IBM um, on high K metal gates. At IBM, I had allowed um, 11 patents and high K metal gates, if you are worrying, uh, wondering where it was in the, um, CMOS flow at um, around 2007, 2008, uh, when we were on 45 nanometer, 32 nanometer, 22 nanometer, high K metal gates was very much in demand. Uh, even today for these type of angstrom era of transistors, uh, high K metal gates is important. And you can see, this is a paper from IDM taken from Intel's work. The transistor technology has become extremely complicated and very innovative. So we have to make our students also extremely creative because you know only sky is the limit for um, in this area. So they are now making this nano ribbon transistors. We need to train students who can you know really be creative and come up with the process solutions for that. Uh, I have also worked a lot in uh, resistive random access memory devices. In that area, my objective now is to um, enable brain inspired computing. And there are a lot of researchers uh, in the country and uh, in the world who are also getting in this area. And we need novel uh, logic and memory devices for that and going forward i'm also interested in uh, heterogeneous integrations and stuff like that so all across we are training students at the end of it at university we create ideas and we train students so we are training students in all these areas in my lab we have um, about um, a lot of phd students masters as well as undergraduate students so we start the process of training early on now, getting back to what we are doing with the Intel funds uh, in um, that is given to University of uh, Cincinnati in collaboration with the um, all other universities in Southwest Ohio. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So uh, um, we have a very nice website and I invite you to see this website. Uh, and this website is uh, basically going to give you a complete idea about what we have been doing. But our objective here is to create a fab ready workforce, like we heard from Mindy's talk and Somia's talk. And uh, we had prior presentations from Intel um, that they want uh, people who are uh, great at experiential uh, getting the equipment running and uh, can optimize the process and stuff like that. So our objective is to produce fab ready workforce via systematic training process. So we call our center as OASIS. OASIS stands for Ohio Southwest Alliance um, uh, on Semiconductors and Integrated Scalable Manufacturing. We have four universities who are leading this effort, but we have several partners, um, including uh, four community colleges uh, and two additional community colleges colleges which are UC uh, extension of UC campuses and then regional undergraduate universities as as well as uh, HBCU and this is funded by the uh, SERP Ohio program uh, uh, from Intel. Our objective is to address curriculum development, faculty training, as well as experiential learning. And in experiential learning, um, you know, uh, UC has a track record of co-ops and internships and stuff like that. So in uh, Curriculum development, we are creating short modules, micro credits, and rapid certifications in the area of semiconductors. And um, we have made a lot of progress. Right now, we have a great program for rapid certification in semiconductors that is open for enrollment. So if somebody is interested in seeing uh, and getting trained, they can go and register at our website. And this is meant for a general um, welcoming uh, platform for general um, learner to know what semiconductor is. If adult learners want, want to retrain themselves in this area of semiconductors, this will be a great platform for, for them to know what to expect out of semiconductors. In addition, we have this virtual uh, reality uh, based courses that is getting developed where objective is to create um, uh, the some of the products this equipment objective is to create the virtual reality based training and uh, that way students can get trained from anywhere even uh, without coming to the lab but at the end of it they have to come to the lab so the real advantage would be to cut down the training time and provide flexibility uh, flexibility to these uh, learners to uh, get trained on the equipment ahead of time 
at University of Cincinnati, we have uh, this um, clean room, a microfabrication center, and we definitely want to leverage that to provide experiential learning uh, via this rapid certification course and some of the other courses that we are uh, developing. Then we have faculty training for the other um, institutes and for us. So there are several programs that we have uh, in this area. Particularly, we want to launch this seminar series where we can invite folks from industry, <clears throat> semiconductor industry, who can share their knowledge and uh, you know help faculty uh, align the courses to the needs of the semiconductor industry. And finally, this experiential learning, UC has pioneered this co-op where our students go to the industry uh, and then um, learn it. So we want to align it more with Intel needs, um, motivate students to go to Intel uh, to do internship if there is an opportunity, and then invite students for the research experience in our lab where they, we can train them in clean room and in our process equipment. So when they go to the uh, to work for semiconductor industry like Intel, they are ready and uh, they can start contributing from day one. So uh, going a little bit more into what our rapid certification and whole entire curriculum looks like. So we have four levels. Level one is rapid certification, which is what you can go to OSS website and uh, enrollment is on. It's a culmination of five introductory courses. And one of the courses also has experiential learning in UC clean room for three hours where we invite in a very flexible schedule environment. People can come and get trained uh, open to everybody and free of cost and in addition in addition we have intensive in uh, we have a, a grant of uh, incentive grant opportunities of for about 300 bucks for students who register for this rapid certification and then we have a level two which is foundational courses so a lot of these courses we already develop, um, uh, offer in our department and in our institute idea is to upgrade them as well as to add more information and then intermediate, which is a little bit more advanced. And then finally, the advanced, which could be uh, uh, coupled with experiential learning, where students can spend extended hours in labs and in clean room to get trained on the process equipment. So we are very confident that at the end of this, <clears throat> uh, we will be able to meet the Intel job requirements uh, that Intel is looking for and expecting from Ohio. These are some of the numbers we are trying to meet um, uh, through rapid certification and all the other classes. Additionally, uh, we are very motivated to increase participation of uh, um, underrepresented minorities and women uh, into semiconductor workforce. And uh, I think we are working with SEMI and Intel to have a woman in a semiconductor workshop um, uh, in April. Uh, so that would be something great uh, for um, uh, people from uh, everywhere to attend and see what, what they can offer. So that is the end of my talk. And uh, if you have any question, uh, uh, please feel free to let me know. Thank you, Dr. Ja, and uh, really appreciate your conversation and, and, and sharing all that, a ton of great information. And uh, I loved so much of it, but I really enjoyed the uh, experiential learning and, and VR headsets to, to help train. So that's, that's fascinating stuff. Um, now I want to welcome uh, someone else from the University of Cincinnati and their Digital Futures Research Facility. Uh, we're going to welcome Jennifer Kribikus to the to the virtual stage, and Jennifer uh, would invite you to share a little bit more about your work in this space and what you're doing from your perspective at UC. So welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Jeff, for inviting me to be here. I'm very happy to to be here with Rashmi on behalf of the University of Cincinnati. And we have a lot of our, our colleagues um, in the audience as well, and that's awesome. So I'm, I'm so happy to share with you some information about the new Digital Futures Building that is here at the University of Cincinnati. Um, it's really exciting for the university. We work, um, we work across the Innovation District, which is also a new and exciting thing for the state of Ohio and also for the city of Cincinnati. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit first about the building and also about the research program that is happening within the building. So the building is called Digital Futures, and it is an intentional name that is uh, focused on, you know, illuminating for the public that this is about computational research that's happening. The future is digital, and the University of Cincinnati is at the cutting edge of it. Um, the, the building itself is 180,000 square feet of research facility, and the research facility is not wet lab research, it's actually dry lab research and computational research that's happening within the facility. So you can imagine Rashmi's um, program that she was just telling us about. Part of her research requires a, a clean room that is not located in this facility, but another part of her research, which, which could very much benefit from the facility is that which is done in partnership with colleagues from um, the community, 
her partners in government, obviously her partners that are at Intel. It's a perfect sort of place for meeting, for holding events, for teaching and learning, and also for doing that computational research that's required of faculty such as Rashmi. Um, this building opened in the summer. We began moving in in June. And um, by we, I mean our staff that supports the research and facilities that are, that are um, the Digital Futures building but also we moved 20 research labs in approximately. Um, the research labs in the building are highly interdisciplinary. So we have, um, we're supporting labs that are led by design and art. We're supporting um, labs that are led by poli-sci and um, engineering. The, there are people who are doing human performance, neuromechanics research. It is across the board, um, AI, everything you can imagine from augmented virtual reality to future mobility. Um, since February 3rd, the building has hosted 122 events. It has um, invited 5,637 5, community members into the building. And our um, operations director, who is um, fantastic and extremely talented, has given 490 tours to date. And that's a lot of activity for a brand new building. It's a lot of people coming through. And I tell you, people who come through love the building. It's spectacular. And the teams that are in there are chomping at the bit to do research and to partner. So I would like to just share my screen and share our website so that you can all have the URL and just take a quick, quick look at you know, what we're doing, what the labs look like. So let me break out. And Chris, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Great. I know that I have a lot of other things happening on here, but let me just give you a little, a quick, um, I'll, I'll put the URL also in the chat, but it's ucdigitalfutures.com. And this is where you can get an overview of the building. You can see some images of the building. You can find obviously emails that you can contact us if you have questions about the building. And then if you go and click on research teams, you will see that we have um, represent, we have these sort of iconic, um, these figures that represent sort of all the various labs that are in here and all the various research that's happening. So if you kind of scroll over, you'll see AI bio, crypto economics, extended reality, future mobility, learning by design, um, Institute for Research and Sensing, Industry 4.0, 5.0, hypersonics, and so on and so forth. So um, with that, I would like to just also point out that the facility and the, the philosophy behind the program is really about use inspired research. And that's, um, you know, we have people who do conduct basic research within the facility, but we are working with people here in this facility that want to partner and have industry partners, have the government and have people in the community driving the questions that are being studied and research and solutions are being um, created to solve problems that matter. So with that, I'd like to just kind of turn it back over to you, Chris, if you have any more questions that you'd like to ask me, or if you wanted to go right into the Innovation District with Jobs Ohio. Great. Well, thank you, Jennifer. We are going to save questions uh, for everyone comprehensively at the end. Uh, but Jennifer, this is a, a fantastic website and overview. So thanks so much for sharing. And I'll say that uh, I absolutely love this website. It, it's really it's really neat. And uh, I love this, just the user experience and, and checking it all out in one place as a, as a hub to start. And so thank you for, for sharing that. And um, I'll also just kind of as a, as a final comment before turning it over to Josh's uh, if you haven't seen what's happening on the campus of the University of Cincinnati and the 1819 Innovation Hub and the digital future space that you just heard about, it's really incredible. So uh, hopefully everyone on here will get to check it out in person uh, one day soon. And so now I want to welcome to our virtual stage, uh, Josh Hoffman from the Jobs Ohio team, which uh, they've been doing incredible work leading the charge as part of Team Ohio on things like Intel and so much uh, in this tech uh, and innovation space as well. So Josh, thank you so much for being here and we'll turn it over to you. Awesome, thanks Chris. And thanks uh, Chris and Jeff for including <clears throat> Jobs Ohio in the Innovation District in this conversation. Before I start, can everybody see my screen? Just wanna make sure, great, perfect. Yes, we can. All right, so I just wanted to give a background about Jobs Ohio, provide the why we invested in the Innovation Districts talk about how we are working with our partners to execute on those um, innovation districts. And then lastly, just open the floor to questions. Um, so for those of you who may not be familiar with Jobs Ohio, we are the private state economic development entity. 
We partner with six regional partners throughout the state. Down in the Southwest region, we partner with Ready. Um, I know that uh, Andrea Enders is on the phone right now. She is our great partner from Ready that works a lot with Tyler Alchin and I in the life sciences. Um, at Jobs Ohio, we take a sector-led approach. So you see nine plus one target sectors. What that means is unlike some of our peers in other states who have economic development professionals that are, are leading those economic development efforts, we have economic development professionals that come from industry. Uh, so my background is healthcare life sciences. So back in 2018, 2019, when Jobs Ohio was considering an investment in the innovation districts, um, we were looking at kind of the future of work and the future of employment and trying to see how the state of Ohio stacked up against its peers. This data is a little old. We do have some updated data, but I kind of wanted to show why we made this investment. And as you can see, the healthcare and the IT sectors were the fastest growing non-retail sectors that has actually continued and is increasing in, in, in rate on both of those sectors for employment. However, Ohio was actually at about 60% of the national rate in both of those sectors. So really this investment was made to drive employment um, as kind of a lagging indicator. And to do that, we invested in the innovation districts to increase research and increase STEM talent. So as you all know, um, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati each uh, received some funding from Jobs Ohio and the state. Um, the purpose of this funding is to drive $9 billion of total investment across the state, uh, create 60,000 new jobs, and drive hopefully 45,000 um, additional STEM graduates. So I wanted to provide just in a, the approach that the healthcare sector is, is taking within these innovation districts. And I will say the healthcare sector and the IT sector are a little unique in how we approach um, partnerships with industry because we see that our partners in industry really want to be close to the, the leaders in research and the leaders in innovation. Um, so what we do is we leverage the assets across these three innovation districts in translational research, real estate, so space, talent, capital, entrepreneurship, and industry. And we really do this in right to win areas. And I'll go into what that means on the next slide. To be successful, we have to partner with our great partners in our, our network, the anchor institutions like UC and Cincinnati Children's down in Cincinnati, industry leaders, so those partnerships that we have across the state with our industry uh, folks, and then lastly, the Ohio trade organization. So because I'm health healthcare sector, we partner a lot with Ohio Life Sciences. We also partner with Chris and his team um, at Ohio X on the digital health, health IT side. And we're doing this across the state in each one of the three uh, innovation districts. What I will say is although Jobs Ohio um, provides support for each one of these innovation districts, they are led by the anchors in each one of those um, cities. Another call out here um, for the Ohio Innovation Exchange, if you are interested in trying to tap into this network of translational research, um, as well as uh, industry partnerships, uh, that is a great tool, we think, to start leveraging some of those relationships in each one of those three cities. So diving down just a little bit more into how we've started to actuate some of this, uh, th this strategy ta tactically. If you look at uh, cell and gene therapy across the state, Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus have a strong presence on the research, industry, and the manufacturing side. Um, we have actually been able to attract companies such as Sarepta Therapeutics because they want to be close to our strong research institutions. Um, interestingly enough, Ohio has a very strong presence in what is called the clinical research space. So MedPace, Amplify Bio, CTI MedPace, and CTI both located in Cincinnati are two are three great examples of how we are really driving clinical research. And then lastly, as Ohio has been a manufacturing state in the past, and we are sticking to those roots, we are now also pivoting into the manufacturing of cell and gene therapies through companies like Andalin and Forge in Columbus. And then um, a recent acquisition by Resilience uh, down in Cincinnati of the, I wanna say the AstraZeneca site. 
um, as they have expanded their CDMO presence into the state as well. So this is just an example of how we see these right to win areas. We also have uh, quite a few others in the health care space where we think Ohio has a right to win just based on the great work that's going on across the three C's and across the state. Um, and, you know, we think that there are similar areas within IT uh, that we should be winning. So that is all the content I had, but more than happy to dive into any questions um, or thoughts from the, from the audience. Yeah, thank you so much, Josh. And, and as I just put in the comments, we're gonna now open it up for a, a comprehensive Q&A. So feel free to put your questions, comments in the chat, or you can DM it to me uh, and happy to work it in. And, and Josh, I'd love to start with you uh, with a question uh, and also just kind of a, a news piece. Um, today, we're talking about Southwestern Ohio, Cincinnati, uh, and the driver for there. But something in the governor's recent budget uh, was putting aside $150 million for new innovation districts outside of those three C's that Jobs Ohio and the state started with. Um, could you maybe talk, even if it's a bit of a high level, what that means? And I've seen even some news reports, just as my personal commentary, uh, folks in Dayton, for instance, uh, you know, kind of already coalescing around some efforts to bring uh, some of these innovation districts to their local cities or regions in other parts of Ohio. Yeah, great question. Um, so a couple of comments. One, these are, although Jobs Ohio supports innovation across the state, these innovation hubs will live outside of our innovation district strategy. They will be in partnership, um, but they will be driven by the state. So any questions can be sent over to the Ohio Department um, of Development. Um, what I will say is that funding, should it go through, will be to focus in on those smaller regions where they have a right to win. So for example, um, if you look at Akron, they have had a great, um, a great research and development presence in the polymer space. We could see potentially a polymer center of excellence. Now, I don't wanna speak for Ohio Department of Development on how that would work, but that is an example of how we could see that potentially working. Great. And Jeff, you're welcome to hop in with any. And then another one, Jennifer and, and Dr. Joff for University of Cincinnati, as we're talking about these innovation districts, um, one of the, the, the points that uh, brought to my mind was the 1819 Innovation Hub and kind of the overall University of Cincinnati strategy. So um, even at a high level, if you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing about that, because one of the things that I found so interesting is the collaboration between uh, the university and all the different uh, regional uh, uh, business partners that have a, even a, a physical on-site presence on the campus of UC um, and just what that means in terms of innovation opportunity and as you build out uh, the Digital Futures uh, uh, Lab as well. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just kind of talking about kind of maybe that strategy that you all have and as I've traveled the state I found it to be extremely unique. Absolutely. And my colleague Kata Beck just put something in the chat if you want a little bit more information that I'm about to give you. Um, the Office of Innovation and the Chief Innovation Officer Ryan Hayes is responsible for the 1819 Innovation Hub. And what what I guess you could characterize this building is as the hub for all of the UC's commercialization activities. So if faculty have questions about intellectual property, if they want to go through our pre-accelerator to, to better understand how to be successful as a small business, if they wanna start up, all of those activities, including others such as, um, they have a huge makerspace on their ground floor where students love to go and use to prototype things um, in all sorts of formats from sewing machines to actually 3D printing uh, of various formats and then um, a wood a sort of facility for wood wood shop and wood making. So they have an extraordinary facility and it's also um, the work that happens there by the staff um, is very complementary to that which happens in the Digital Futures building, which is a research facility. So where you'll find people there to help and focus on helping you start up, helping you protect your intellectual property, helping to license your inventions and in, in your innovations. Um, we, on the other hand, are allowing people to have that space to actually get to that point. So once they, once someone such as Rashmi um, reaches that moment, then she can walk directly across the street and get the get the assistance assistance that she needs from the innovation um, hub. I'll I'll hand it over to Rashmi if she has some experiences to share with the innovation hub. Yeah, I have had I have had great experience. Um, 
uh, a lot of students get involved in various aspects of product design from the very beginning, which is great. And it also gives us opportunity to patent our ideas and stuff like that, which is awesome. So I think we have a great support uh, in that direction. And I agree with Jennifer on that. Uh, one thing I wanted to connect um, what Josh was saying is um, Ohio is uh, all set to become life sciences hub and things like that. And, um, you know, uh, connecting it to semiconductors going forward, uh, uh, there is something called uh, system technology co-optimization. That is, you have to optimize the chip to the application. That is where the whole area is headed towards. So now we already have a great infrastructure for life sciences and we have a big semiconductor company, Intel, in Ohio. So I think uh, down the line, we will have combining these two together, we will have a great uh, future in this space where o Ohio can take charge of designing the chips and manufacturing it aligned with the uh, uh, healthcare needs and accelerating it in that direction. It's really well said, Rashmi, thank you so much. I, I was gonna invite Sonia and Mindy to kind of comment. So, I mean, a lot of what we've done today is sort of showcase what an industry higher education partnership looks like. And Cincinnati is just doing this incredibly well and with support from Jobs Ohio. But um, Sonia and Mindy, would you like to talk a little bit about um, sort of best practices for industry partnerships as a company? And um, you know what the experience has been like as you've worked across the state with our higher education community? I guess I can start. Um, I think one of the best practices that I've seen and I've worked um, you know, in other, with other universities outside your state is, is definitely the collaboration, um, specifically with the community colleges and um, universities. That's, that's been um, a really good collaboration and it, it's helping to scale much quicker than we thought we would be able to do. Um, Somia, do you have any? Absolutely. I think that's been a real um, uh, highlight here of this collaboration. Yes, Intel brought this investment as a, a, a um, seeding grant, right? But what we have seen is the community has come together. This was a call for action and everybody seems to have stepped up and uh, the collaboration is just, you know, outstanding here. That's fantastic. And what I was going to say is I know we have um, universities all over the state and probably even beyond Ohio on the call, but um, for those that are inside Ohio, if you want to be part of the Innovation Exchange, we have the capacity to include your data. I didn't really cover that, but right now we have about eight or nine universities, and there's several that are waiting in the wings to join, and many of them are those that we've been featuring on this innovation tour. Um, Kent State comes to mind as one example. So we're, we're growing our capacity to support this infrastructure that's going to be needed and also um, leveraging the expertise and resources across the state, so that's really great. Well, thanks, Jeff. And one maybe uh, one other question from Donald Davis in, in a chat that I got, um, which I think maybe Jeff, you and I can each offer a little bit of commentary, but opportunities for small businesses. So we've been talking about large corporations, uh, but opportunities for small businesses to collaborate with academia for workforce development training programs. Um, and, and Donald, I'll mention from an Ohio X perspective, and I appreciate Josh, you mentioning this, uh, trade associations like Ohio X or Ohio Life Sciences for the life science space. Um, that's one of the tasks that we have. And so as companies uh, become part of our respective organizations, as an example, we can work with groups and we do work with groups like Jobs Ohio on some of these uh, things. But maybe Jeff, from a uh, innovation exchange perspective, you know, how could a small business, how could a uh, maybe a, a smaller entity than, a, than an Intel operating worldwide, uh, how can they leverage this platform and partner with universities across Ohio to, uh, to tap into the services and the skills and the, and the research that they have on campus? Yeah, no, great question. Thanks, Don, for that too. Um, and thanks, Chris. So, you know, we are we engage with um, small, but medium, large companies at various levels. Um, you know, from the most basic level is how can you access our number one product, which is our students. So um, that looks like career fairs and internships. That would be one. Um, we also offer um, capstone seminars across many of our academic disciplines where you can sponsor a very small project where students can do some troubleshooting and planning and make some recommendations based on that. There's just a whole range of ways to engage with institutions. And what I would suggest is if you have, if you're a company, a small, medium-sized company, definitely take what Chris suggested. Uh, the other group that I was thinking of, the Ohio Manufacturing Association, is another incredible um, trade association that's really valuable. 
but reach out to them or reach directly out to um, the industry liaison at each of our campuses. Um, and we can help you find that either through our innovation exchange or just reach out to me directly. But all of those things are possible in many ways. This, the partnership starts with an initial connection of uh, here's what we want to do and here's how the university can help. And then it's it's up to both parties to kind of choose a path forward that's sort of beneficial for everybody involved. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. And, and I'll mention, I just dropped in the comments two links, one for the Innovation Exchange website uh, and Donald and others. That's a great place to go and uh, you know, search around and, and see what uh, is happening in your respective industry or sector. And it's such a great resource. And then uh, I also added the LinkedIn uh, page. So if you want to uh, click on that and follow the Innovation Exchange online. Uh, and Jeff, I, as I was just pulling that link, I noticed that you all just passed a thousand followers. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that's an exciting thing. So so be sure to hopefully we can bump that up a little bit after this one as well. But uh, we're just about at time. I want to thank everyone for being here. Jeff, any final comments from the Ohio Innovation Exchange uh, as we wrap up our second stop on this tour across the state? Yeah. Um, just a quick announcement that next we're going to be moving across the state to the southeast region. Um, Ohio University being featured along with Jobs Ohio and some of the pro innovation uh, programs that are available. So if you're on our LinkedIn page and you're following, you'll get an announcement about that. Of course, we'll push it out in the normal ways. I also want to thank all of the panelists. I know I have to act as kind of cowboy and rodeo wrangler to get all of you and all your schedules together, but we really appreciate everybody stepping up um, and being here today and sharing all of this incredible work. It's really, it's truly inspirational to see how Ohio has stepped up. And we thank Intel, especially for your sponsorship and support. Yeah, well, thank you again. And Jeff, I'd echo that as well. Uh, thanks to the Ohio Innovation Exchange for making this series possible. Uh, we've done Northeastern Ohio, now Southwestern Ohio. We'll see how Southeastern Ohio next is coming up. So uh, whether the Ohio Innovation Exchange or through Ohio X channels, you can find out uh, more on a save the date soon. But again, thank you to our panelists, our speakers, uh, Jeff, you and your team and all the attendees and love to see the chat uh, going so strong throughout the course of this. We'll have this recorded and uploaded to the Ohio X YouTube channel. So if you do want to come back and check through any of this, we'll have this up as soon as possible. But everyone, thank you so much. And looks like we're just out of here at 1259, uh, but appreciate your time today. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. So thanks and so much. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you, Chris. Really appreciate thank your you all. hosting. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good